Seven Arsenal players missed Arsenal's training in relation to the upcoming game against Monaco. Mikel Arteta allegedly has refused to sell Gabriel Jesus. We've been linked with Mohamed Kudus and Nico Williams and Yoko Rez and, um, you know, Marcus Rashford and Adamola Lookman. So there's a lot to go over. If you allow me to share my screen, people, we get straight into it. As usual, smash the like button. Now, we will circle back on Mikel Arteta's press conference and see everything he's had to say. But as you can see via this headline... Seven Arsenal stars missed training with Mikel Arteta facing fresh injury crisis. We got lucky last season, February of this year, Mikel Arteta said we've got one of the smallest squads. Maybe we didn't take heed of that collectively as a club and we're paying for it. You know, several players are injured at this moment in time. Some players come back, others are missing. Mikel Arteta's played a bit of a coy game, you know, with players and injuries. And sometimes people have come back, sometimes they've not been involved. So I don't know what to say in that regards. I think we're fourth in the Premier League for injuries as well. No excuses. Everybody gets them. Um, Arsenal face more problems in defence with Thomas Partey, who has been playing right back, and Timber missing training ahead of the Champions League clash against Monaco, with Gabriel Magalhaes also still absent. Mikel Arteta has been without first-choice options, Gabriel and Calafuri for the last two games, with Zinchenko joining the injured list last weekend against Fulham. I mean, Zinchenko picks up a lot of knocks. I love Tomiyasu, but Tomiyasu's a no-show. At some point, we're going to have to address this, really, and truly there's too many unanswered questions within this squad for all the money spent and as long as a couple of them have been here the trio were absent from training on tuesday ahead of the visit of the league R side monaco with Partey and timber also not seen among the group now Mikel arteta does play a bit of a dev a, a bit of a coy game and is a bit of a devil in a nice way when the cameras are on you know we you know zinchenko can't keep his mouth shut but you know through him we found out you know Mikel arteta which I don't think is anything unique to him, tells injured players to get on the team bus. We've also seen reports from the athletic to the point where rival managers don't take too much stock in what Mikel Arteta has to say around injuries. He's known to play games, people. But I think I speak for many Arsenal fans where we say, you know, to be without Gabriel, respect to Kivio, but the drop-off is too big. Obviously, Timber going from right back to left back kind of kills any sort of balance we have, owing to the problems on the left-hand side. We miss Calafuri. You know, we don't have the luxury of utilising Tomiyasu or Zinchenko. Tommy, Thomas Part has done quite well in terms of injuries, but we're never quite confident. And negatively, we were probably due a prolonged absence with Benjamin White not being available. We've played that man into the ground. Um, and we've obviously had to cope with Martin Odegaard's knock as well. So, We'll have to see exactly what he said, but you don't want to hear that, man. Especially around the defence. I think the drop-off is too big when Kivio comes in for Gabriel. Like, obviously, Gabriel is twice, three times, maybe even four times the player. But, you know, Kivio doesn't provide us enough on the ball, doesn't defend, give us any real stability in games we're going to be tested. I'm not criticising him. That's just a fact. And obviously, we've got no left-hand side. Our right-hand side's not on it. We're in issues. You know, Thomas Partey's moved to right back. You know, I actually don't think that's a problem beyond the obvious. Obviously, I want Partey to play in midfield. Is our best performing midfielder, but it's then the knock on effect because the midfield don't offer anything. We're not really clinical or creating chances, you know, or really, you know, in I would describe Arsenal as. We play football like Mayweather, and I love Mayweather. It's like we try to win games on points. We we jab a lot. We might, you know, the points, the 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 the, the judges in a boxing match might give us a lot of the rounds, but we never go for the knockout blow. This is why I don't. You can't. I can't not say. Sounded like a hypocrite. I can't not say I don't take too much stock in possession, chances, shots on target, xg, field tilts, all of that. But something needs to give. You know. I do think we create chances. I think it's very naive. If you expect any team, Mikel Arteta's team, even Stoke, if you think teams are just going out there to get set pieces and win a game, it's quite a naive play, way of, of looking at things. Across the season, every team is going to score more from open play than set pieces. But set pieces at the moment seems like the only thing we have a clue. And we have to thank, be thankful for Nicholas Hover because you take a lot of the goals we've scored from set pieces, we lose a lot of points. And it looks like he is the only man that you could say is 100% doing his job. There's question marks over our Teta and several of the players and indirectly, you know, those that are in charge of the club. So we'll get back onto that, people. Allegedly, Mikel Arteta has also ruled out the possibility of Gabriel Jesus leaving in January. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Obviously, if you're offered something you can't refuse, great, you know, because I do think, you know, for a variety of reasons, whether it's their stock falling, whether it's contracts, whether it's the availability, as I always say, you can make a case of Gabriel Jesus, Zinchenko, Trossard, if, if they're Saudi offers, Thomas Partey, Jorginho, Tommy Yasu, you know, Sterling and Neto probably not be here past their loans. There's a lot of players you can make a case might leave people. Um, 
it's quite mad, really. The 27-year-old Gabriel Jesus has scored just one goal in his past 31 games for Arsenal. When you know, where Gabriel Jesus has never been a, a prolific man, and there's plenty of question marks in that regards, you know, your general impact across the football pitch is, is, is even more concerning to me, really and truly. You know, you look like a f if we didn't know he's Gabriel Jesus, Brazilian international, won all these things at City, 45, 50 million addition at Arsenal, you'd think this is a nervous, tried and untested young player. And again, indirectly, the players have to take fault, but indirectly, you know, you look at the squad we've amassed, I don't think we have bad players, but you look in the final third, if Saka and Odegaard aren't on song, we're in issues. Trossard at times, you know, has better games than others, probably the second most reliable. Martinelli's falling off a cliff. Raheem Sterling, clearly not rated by Mikel Arteta. Kai Havertz, I think we've drawn enough blood from that stone in the current role he's at. Not saying we should alienate him. There's too many unanswered questions in that forward line, really. And as much as the players have to take responsibility, you know, on paper, if these players went to other clubs, they'd do a lot more. So you look at that, you look at our real, really and truly not really playing to our standard in the final third. There's a lot to address. And I do think there's a lot of self-inflicting issues. But when asked if he'd go in January, he said, no, no, nonsense, people. Um, boy, he said also, like all strikers, they go on phases and moments and that gap is becoming big. It's true that obviously a lot of things has happened. Injuries, absence of not playing or starting games that much but his attitude has been really good it always is and we're going to try help him overcome the situation as soon as possible but hey, we're going to need to really because we're let's be honest we're carrying a lot of players we're carrying a lot of people you know really and truly <clears throat> if you're not William Saliba Gabriel Timber Calafuri Benjamin White when fit David Raya Martin Odegaard Bakayo Saka young Ethan and young Lewis Skelly we're carrying you you know, we're carrying you because we don't left the left hand side's lucky dip. Before we even talk about the left eight with rice, rice, we're not carrying you as well. But before we talk about that, before we talk about left back, you know, whether it's players that are starting or whether it's, you know, players that come on, it's lucky dip, really. You know, when respectfully, I love Trossard, I love all of them. You know, big fan of Trossard, Jesus, and Martinelli. But when Trossard starts, you're begging for Martinelli. When Martinelli starts, you're begging for Trossard. You know, sometimes you're saying, yo, where's Sterling? I don't think anybody's saying Gabriel Jesus, but he's been used. It's lucky dip on the left hand side. And Truly in Mikel Arteta's heart, of course he believes in them because you're there, you see their qualities, but do you really believe they're going to impact the game, really? Like, the only one you really have faith in off the bench, it, out of the names I said, is Trossard. And really and truly off the bench, I know people have come and saved the day and all these things. Really, if Trossard's on the bench by default to a degree, but I would say for me anyways as an Arsenal fan, young Ethan, not really inspired by the bench, if I'm honest with you. And with Ethan, he's relevant but irrelevant in that we can't live or die by his performances. That man just, young man just, need, and Lewis Skelly when he plays, just go learn your craft and ultimately have fun and get up to speed with things. Um, moving on, people. Allegedly, Victor Jokeres has the exit door at Sporting open to him as the Lisbon club have been plunged into crisis following the departure of Ruben Amarin to United. They've been struggling a bit and falling down the table, people. Apparently, he's been left with discontent. Now, we've previously heard his agent come out and say the big reason he went to Sporting was because of Amarin. I personally think he's He's going to go Man United. Any team is going to struggle after losing a manager that's been doing good things for them. But I mean, the 26-year-old boy, when you got 25 goals in 22 games, we definitely could do with that. Linked with Arsenal, linked with Manchester United, every now and again linked with Chelsea and PSG. Also tipped allegedly to go to Barcelona as a kind of longer-term replacement for um Mr. Mr. Lewandowski, we all know about at this moment of his release clause and things of that ilk, so I don't need to waste time. Allegedly, he's hinted at a move to a former club by naming two former Red Devils as his footballing idols. Is that a coincidence or is that mind games, people? I don't know. For what it's worth, I've said it before, I think he's going to go Man United. But yeah, he said Cristiano Ronaldo and Ibrahimovic are two of his idols. I don't like to use the word idols, but for a striker, if you're looking at what Ronaldo's done since he's he became that goal scorer, someone that's achieved what Vlahovic has done, you should be looking at that. And we've been linked with Marcus Rashford. Check out my other video. But obviously, you know, Man United's environment, I'm going off topic here, Manchester United's environment isn't necessarily the best. But where you look at Marcus Rashford, you don't have to rate Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as a manager. But there's a lot you could learn from him as a striker. Ruud van Nistelrooy was there for two minutes, but you could pick his brain. Louis van Gaal seen the best of the best develop. Jose Mourinho, the list goes on. And in terms of players, you've been around Cristiano Ronaldo, Di Maria. I might be lying about that, but Di Maria, Ronaldo, Ibrahimovic, even in people that don't play in your position. And there's no, still no significant improvement. I like the illusion of Rashford and Mikel Arteta getting a trick out of him. But for the wages, the money... 
it's more unanswered questions. Going back to what I said about how everybody that plays on that left-hand side and to a degree Kai Havertz or everyone apart from Saka, we've already got unanswered questions. Already got unanswered questions in midfield and in defence. Why add another one? It don't make sense to me, but I'll be the first to applaud Rashford. I actually like Rashford, but it's a madness. Moving on, apparently Arsenal hope to pull off a second gigantic raid on West Ham by signing an attacker in January and a report has revealed why the Hammers could begrudgingly cash in. We all know we signed Declan Rice. We've been linked with Mohamed Kudus. Now, in life, anything can happen. Weirder things have happened. But really? Kudus? Really? For West Ham, considering West Ham's form at the moment, you really want to let your key player go mid-season? I would love the two to have these two players in shot. Bowen 747, as I call him. Cold. Cold player. Kudus. Cold. Should have bought him when he's at Ajax. Uh, <clears throat> I don't believe this. There's rumours of a release clause. Apparently, he's got an 80 million price tag. I would love the club love the club to go for him. Apparently, West Ham got their own PSR issues. Not too, not sure how much stock to read in that. Obviously, Kivior is someone that's always linked with moves away. Allegedly, you've seen over the last few days, Napoli have been in talks that's had a bid rejected. It does, you know, again, there is a reality where the Kieran Tini's, who I forgot to mention, the Kieran Tini's, the Tommy Asus, the Kivior's, the Gabriel Jesus's, the Zinchenko's, the Jorginho's, the Partey's, you know, the Gabriel Jesus, if I haven't said that. Um, for a variety of different reasons, once again, you could, we, I, I would be on selling them dependent on what happens. In January, for an already depleted squad, where you've seen, hopefully we've got a League Cup final to look forward to in February. In January, we'll have two extra Champions League games. The FA Cup comes into it and we'll still be in and amongst of this condensed fixture calendar list where the games are coming every four days. Whether I believe in these players or not, in terms of bodies, it does not make sense, people, to me anyways. Keeping up the theme with David Ornstein or better yet, uh, Victor Jokerez, apologies. He said on Jokerez, can you predict the biggest, the next biggest move in the transfer market? Maybe Victor Jokerez next summer. I think he'll go somewhere. So that is a big story to break and that will cause ripples within the industry and the market, people. I don't think that's anything necessarily groundbreaking, but there, there you have it, people, in that regard. So let's keep it moving. We've rejected a 15 million euro bid, allegedly from Napoli for Kivio, as we've been speaking about. Arteta has apparently demanded the sign of Nico Williams in January as he thinks we're very lightweight in the attacking third. He, we all know Nico Williams has a 58 million release clause which isn't reachable but can we I guess it's not the most unrealistic of transfer moves. It didn't happen but at a point we were on putting down the money for Vlahovic, Caicedo and Mudrik so it could happen. Nico Williams has you know, been touted to Barcelona apparently he's open to a Premier League move and I'm sure you know Arteta could sell him a dream and there's plenty of reasons to want to sign for Arsenal but surely you want to at least stay at Bilbao until the end of the year because he has made a big song and dance about wanting to achieve stuff. Apparently, Lookman will be open to joining Arsenal in 2025. He has a contract at Atalanta until 2026. So, yeah, in the next summer of 2025, we got a, they got a decision to make and I'd be on signing Lookman, especially if he wants to return home. We're apparently be, still being linked with Dan Ashworth. I'm bored of speaking about this. I don't think we'll go for him. I don't have any tangible proof, but some of it just rubs me up the wrong way about him. But it wouldn't be too unrealistic for him to be on the list. Just because you're on the short list don't mean people are going to go for you, but you get where I'm going with that. Apparently, Declan Rice was blown away by Bowen's performance against Wolves on Monday. Talk to your boy and tell him to sign for us. Uh, what's Saliba said? He makes huge statement on Arsenal future and mid-Real Madrid links. He's pledged his long-term future to the club, which is great. Can't expect you to say anything else. But at some point, if we're not winning major honours, you're going to have to keep it moving. Mikel Arteta is giving his press conference people. Um, on injuries, he said, we have to manage a lot of the players, so they're probably not going to be fit for tomorrow. And I doubt I still have 24 hours to make those decisions and hopefully the right ones and he basically said on the injuries it is what it is it is what it is but us fans have been talking about this people we all know not playing with a settled back four affects us on if we need to create more chances from open play we need to be a bit more clinical stop throwing jabs and go for a killer blow we need a bit of healthy randomness we want to create more from every angle and from set pieces as well we could have created more than we did and we could have scored another one or two so always trying to evolve and be better which is true he did say it was kind of difficult to accept how he was almost a bit baffled as to how we didn't beat fulham but ultimately we didn't beat fulham because the one opportunity that led to our demise when we conceded, didn't defend well enough. We did put the ball in the back of the net, but we was offside and we huffed and puffed. And there were, you could count on one hand really and truly something close to clear-cut chances. Kai Havertz dragged one wide. Partey had a header. Saliba had a header. Declan Rice had a, had a left-footed strike in the first half. But 
you are in that stage now, and we did score, obviously, where you're being able to count on one hand the chances Arsenal have had. And there's obviously a few more that I'm not alluding to. This was this is new to me. You know, I'm a spoiled 29 year old. I'm a Wenger baby. This was never a thing. Emirates, early Emirates era, obviously, even when we had lesser players, creating chances wasn't a thing. And I'm not saying I want to go back to that, but we were used to Arsenal creating a million chances, maybe not necessarily scoring. The team get one opportunity and they win the game. Now we're not really creating. And when you've dropped off the level defensively, even when players have been fit, when you're not quite clinical in the final third, regardless of there being some positive statistics in terms of open play and doing our set pieces, but we're not scoring enough. When there's questions about the midfield, can you really be surprised? We're, we're having these conversations, people. So, yeah, big up Odegaard for becoming a father. Young Josh Nichols apparently has even got issues, people. So you've got Lewis Skelly and Josh Nichols getting knocked. On Gabriel Jesus, we've gone over that. Once again, he said no, no sense in letting him go in January. He's, we obviously went through that. On Kieran Tini, he said, people, yes, he is ready. He's training really well and he's going to have an opportunity for sure. With the way the team is looking at the moment, it's for that reason and because he's earned it as well with the way he's behaved and the way he's been with us because he's willing to do it. And when that happens, you have to give opportunity to those kind of players fair enough people um he said he's not worried about our lack of scoring from open play which i am and he's obviously going to big up monaco he's not going to say anything different in that regard so well, hey we need to beat monaco make sure we get into the last eight it's as simple as that